Yes, I was um, a little bit thinking about um, giving quest um, questions because I could generate like a lot of them. So I was thinking um, I should give like some question what really um, um, what really brings us with the practice um, a level more up or what what will be good for the practice. So um, give me a question which is not generated. Okay, uh, what is the difference between uh, uh, between um, awareness and concentration? Do you feel the space in this room? Yeah. That's awareness. Do you see the stick in my hand? Uh -huh. Can you see it for a long time? Yeah. Can you focus on it without moving? That's concentration. So concentration is on one point and... Um, or multiple points, but it has an object. Uh -huh. Awareness does not have an object. Uh -huh. It's like more like, this, more like um, feeling a space or like a, some kind of open. Keep it simple. Mind without an object in a state of clarity, that's awareness. Uh -huh. And Mind with an object or multiple objects without moving, without distraction, that's concentration. Mm -hmm. And if, let, let's say, if I want to generate uh, concentration, I can just put some effort into it, like reading a book or something. And with the awareness, um, have you do it with effort or is it like with all this effort? Like if you say it's with effort, it's a mistake. You say it's without effort, also a mistake. <laughs> yeah, this, this is now like uh, Zen talk. I don't want to really. Go to Are you surprised that this is happening here? Let's, let's, let's be like in, let's have it like a normal talk. <laughs> so <laughs> Zen and normal, same or different? <laughs> yeah, I know that, but you don't. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to talk this Zen language. Like it's, I think you Zen understand. language is terrible, right? Yeah, it's true. It, it cuts all the BS. That's a that's a problem. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> this means your practice is working. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Back, back to my question, and please keep it not in Zen language. <laughs> you know, I don't get these requests every day. It's, it's really wonderful to work with that. Yeah, for you, yes, but for me, it's, um, it's, it's a little bit different, let's say it like that. Um, so, no, I'm also like, let's say we can do some stuff and we do it with effort. And then in the practice, there are some stuff we, we just let's have it go or it will happen or let's say there's this kind of a name who buy it, it you know what the go. problem is with your question it's and very question general is, uh, what can we do and what should we do like keep your mind clear with that thinking clear like space clear like a mirror and when you do that you get this basic awareness and when you have to focus on a point on an object then do that and then change the object. When you read, you focus on the lines, you get the meaning. It's a linear process. Okay. So when you read, just read. So the, so the mirror does not change whether it has an object or multiple objects before that or none. That's why in Zen we make this objectless mind first. So get back to this empty mirror, clear like space, consciousness first. And then you can have one object, two objects, multiple objects before it because you will never confuse yourself with the object of the mind. So that's why the practice is so basic, seemingly. But when we do, do Kongan practice, then that kind of training actually trains you, teaches you how to deal with objects of the mind and conflicting objects and stories that are not logical, they're, not, they're par paradoxical, annoying, irritating, inspiring, whatever, shows you your reactive mind. You know what the perfect state of mind is? Ah, that's the same question. <laughs> when you don't distinguish between Zen question and other, and, that's a perfect um, state of mind. don't know, when, or I cannot say it. 
this don't know not bad, but still very small don't know. Yeah. Make it bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Love and compassion. Um, should we build it up or just it just pop out of um, let's say no mind or how you say it? Don't compassion know. and yeah. don't know if um, love and compassion comes out of this don't know mind. You spoke Zen language. Did you see that? How did no, that I happen? I just read this, this one book, so I understand. I Even one book it. is enough to poison your precious yeah, mind. I, I, <laughs> your I was just precious. thinking to throw it away, this book, because mind. it's just mad. So I don't want to talk like this. Terrible. So, compassion and wisdom are best friends. So if you just pick one out, usually the other suffers. And uh, see how your wisdom pairs up with compassion and use both together. That's good. Um, but, but we don't create them. They, they just come by their, their own. If you take away the obstacles, they function spontaneously. Yeah, just like yeah. if you take away suffering, happiness appears by itself. Many times I get the question, why doesn't Zen talk about happiness and love and all these directly? Why? Because we don't want to predefine for people what is love and happiness and etc. So it's enough if you remove the hindrances. And once you do that, you're fine. Happiness appears by it itself, etc. Compassion, wisdom, same. It doesn't mean you don't have to learn. You have to learn certain things. You have to discard certain things. That's part of the process. But wisdom and compassion, if you remove the hindrances, they function very naturally. Speak. I'm asking if uh, there are different um, enlightenment, like different stages. How would I know? <laughs> yeah, uh, for example, there's you. Um, Mistake. But, but then there's like some um, teachers from the Dalai Lama. And let's say there's who, uh, this teacher, he spent like 20 years in the forest. And then let's say there will be a super guru um, being Bigger in the Himalaya for 50 years and talking to the lions. So my question is, if there's like one alignment, you get it once and you will have it forever. Or is it more like a fluid thing? Like you? I think I have a new work period job for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have uh, this really nice frosty winter. I would like you to dig a trench in the garden for our new water pipe. <laughs> and every time you hit the ground with the pickaxe, you say, enlightenment, boom, <laughs> then get it out of there. Boom, enlightenment, get it out of there. So uh, enlightenment is not good, not bad, but it's a word, okay? So what it really means, if people try to explain that, it's a mistake. If we leave it unattended, also a mistake. In Zen, we lead you to the experience of clarity where enlightenment and suffering, you know, they meet. In fact, they have the same essence. That's why I talk about the nuclear power plant and the nuclear bomb. So, if you read the Heart Sutra, in the state of duality, there is no separate notion of enlightenment or ignorance. This oneness experience is what we are cultivating. So there are many, many kind of uh, snappy ways of answering your question. I don't do that. I just say, work on it, get to the true meaning of it, and use it. But if you have this word enlightenment on your forehead, no, no, it's a I don't mistake. Have it like, like this. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's, it's also not such a super question. I'm just like or thinking if there's like a super mega enlightenment um, hero, let's say, and and then there will be like another one who is like, let's say, enlightened, you can feel it uh, of his action, but he is like... I think your next so Kongan powerful. will be going to a mega shopping center. <laughs> you know, there are these shopping centers that are like bigger than anything. They are huge. Also in Germany, but I, I've seen some in the US, which is really blowing your mind to pieces. In Korea too, they have quite a few. And is your enlightenment bigger than that shopping center or smaller? So this mega maha 
ultra size, it doesn't apply. Read the Diamond Sutra. The Diamond Sutra is fantastic because uh, Suputi asked the Buddha, Lord, uh, can you recognize the supremely enlightened one by the 32 distinguishing marks of the Buddha? Then Shakyamuni says, no Suputi, you cannot recognize the supremely enlightened one by the 32 distinguishing marks of the Buddha. And why so, world honored one? Because Suputi, enlightenment and the enlightened one does not depend on the 32 distinguishing marks of the Buddha. This is the essential kind of cleansing of the mind of any ideas that can take hold that enlightenment is this, enlightenment is that, enlightenment is small, it's big, it's me, it's others. It's all BS. Come back to the moment, come back to the mind which does not think in terms of dualities. And that's true enlightenment. And just to give you some positive teaching that you can take with you so that you wouldn't have these bad dreams at night and keeps you rolling, Sung San Sim talks about three kinds of enlightenment. So first enlightenment is attaining this point. Original enlightenment is seeing that the sky is blue and the trees are green. That's truth. And final enlightenment is correct function. When somebody is hungry, give them food. Somebody is thirsty, give them drink. Tired, go to sleep. Someone needs help, help them. So just like this, or this function has two kinds. Subject just like this, and object just like this. Subject just like this means you become one with the situation, with the other person's mind. Somebody said, I am sad. Compassion can be exercised in that way. Object just like this is addressing the situation, correcting the situation. Somebody is in a kind of uh, very difficult situation, you help them out. So, first enlightenment, original enlightenment, final enlightenment. Which one do you like? Oh. <laughs> Not too greedy? I don't know. That's best. Keep that mind. Okay?